calculations. <laughs> if you can do exponents on your phone, your phone will work for a calculator if you need to. Uh, but just so you can kind of see the numbers we're doing and why we're doing what we're doing. We're going to just kind of follow a pattern to start things up. Okay? We're going to talk about what we notice in this pattern, and this pattern is actually going to create a rule for us. Okay, so they've done the first part for you. They've calculated 10 to the 3, 10 to the 2, 10 to the 1. And I would say, right, 1,110. Then they have 10 to the power of 0, which they've left blank. You might want to use your calculator for that, or you might want to remember your exponent to the 0 rule. What's anything to the power of 0 equal? 1. Perfect. So anything to the power of 0 equals 1. Awesome. And that's a rule we learned, oh, I don't know, a little while ago. The screen is just going to be too small. Eh? Yeah, that works. Perfect. Awesome. The next one. They put 10 to the negative 1 in their calculator. When they did that, they get 0 0.1. They then changed 0 0.1 to a fraction. So they went math, frac. And they ended up getting this. 1 over which is the same thing as saying 1 over 10 to the power of 1. Awesome. We're going to fill in the rest of the blanks here. So 10 to the negative 2. If you put 10 to the negative 2 in your calculator, you're going to get a decimal. What decimal do you get? Zero point zero one. Perfect. We don't like decimals, right? We prefer fractions. So you go math, frac. And you end up getting 1 over 100. That's the same thing as saying 1 over 10 squared. Like that. Okay, 100 is just 10 to the power of 2. So we could change 100 to be 10 to the power of 2. Awesome. If you try 10 to the negative 3 and you put in your calculator, again, you're going to get a decimal. You're going to get 0 0.001. Again, we don't like decimals, so you change that to a fraction. You go math, frac, you get 1 over 1,000, which is the same thing as saying 1 over 10 to the power of 4. Sorry, 3. Fantastic. If you look at these results, do you notice some sort of pattern with these negative exponents? You look at the exponent we put into the calculator, and you look at what we get out. And what's happening? Monday morning talk it okay? You should notice that your exponent being negative, like 10 to the negative 1, is now on the bottom. It just becomes 1 divided by 10 to the power of 1. And it goes from negative to positive. Look at 10 to the negative 2. Same thing happened. 10 to the negative 2 then became 1 divided by 10 to the power of positive 2. It's a negative turned to a positive. That means 10 to the negative 3 followed the same pattern, and negative became positive. Instead of 10 to the power of 3, it became 1 divided by 10 to the power of 3. This is actually an exponent rule. Okay, we're going to close this side too to see how the pattern works again. And then we're going to talk about what the actual exponent law is, and then we're going to practice our exponent laws again. Awesome. We'll start off with 3 to the power of 0. Anything to the power of 0 equals... One. Awesome. Now let's start to get into this, the negative exponents. You go 3 to the negative 1, you go math frac, and you end up getting 1 divided by 3. And it's following the same pattern that we had before. 3 to the negative 2. Put in your calculator, you get a decimal, you go math frac, you get 1 over 9 which is the same thing as saying 1 over 3 squared. Because 9 is 3 squared. If we use that pattern, we can skip the calculator part. 
So the pattern seems to be negative exponents change to become positive exponents when you write them divided by 1. That means 3 to the negative 3 is going to change to become 1 divided by 3 to the power of 3. Right? The power is now divided by 1, or dividing into 1, and then the exponent became positive. Awesome. Last ones we're going to do over here. This same rule could work for anything. You don't even need to know what the base is. The base, again, being the bigger number and the exponent being the smaller. So, for instance, a to the power of 0. Anything to the power of 0 equals 1. So even though we don't know what the number a is, we're just going to say anything to the power of 0, 1. Awesome. Following our same rules before, we have a to the negative 1. That could be rewritten as 1 divided by a to the positive. The negative becomes a positive. The entire power is now underneath 1. A to the negative 2. Same idea. We have a negative exponent. We want to make it a positive exponent by writing it under 1. A to the negative 3. Same thing is going to happen. We want a positive exponent. So we change to be positive and we write it under 1. This concept could go either way. For instance, let me scroll down here a little bit. This is your negative exponent law, right here. This is what we just talked about. The part where it says a cannot equal zero, don't worry about that. This is the law. Like this is the rule that you're going to follow. It says that if you have a negative power, you can turn it to a positive power by then putting it on the bottom of a fraction. You could technically go the opposite direction as well, which means if you had a negative power on the bottom of a fraction, you could make it a positive power by no longer writing it as a fraction. And this just becomes a to the n. So the rule could kind of go both ways. What we like to say is that negative exponents, the power either just switches to the top or switches to the bottom, and it becomes positive. So if you have a negative exponent on the top of a fraction, move it to the bottom of a fraction, and it becomes positive. You have a negative exponent on the bottom of a fraction, move it to the top of a fraction, and it becomes positive. We're going to do a bunch of questions together so you can kind of see what it looks like, and then you're going to practice that today. Awesome. Let's do these questions right here. We'll start with example one. Simplify, that means combine everything as much as you can, express with positive exponents. Okay, that means your final answer can't have any negative exponents. Awesome. It then says evaluate without using a calculator. We're not going to do that. I'm not worried about evaluate with a calculator. We've done lots of that. Okay, let's start with A. We have 4 to the power of 5 times 4 to the power of negative 3. The first thing we do is use our exponent laws to combine these powers. They have the same base, both fours. Same base with multiplication. What do we do to the exponents? We add them. Awesome. Okay, so we are adding these exponents. 5 plus negative 3 would become 4 to the power of 2. Right, we added our exponents. 5 plus negative 3. Okay, that's a positive exponent. We simplified it, we're done. Let's try B. We have 3 to the power of 2 times 3 to the power of negative 5. These are like bases, they're both 3s. That means we can add the exponents because we're multiplying. 2 plus negative 5 would be 3 to the negative 2 plus negative 5 is negative 3. Yeah. So do we need positive exponents? Perfect. So the question says simplify, which we've done, and then it says positive exponents. This is not a positive exponent. Right? We got a negative exponent. Therefore, we need to use our negative exponent law to change it to a positive exponent. Uh, don't 
the way our negative exponent law works. I like to picture this as like 3 minus 3 divided by 1. I like to picture everything as a fraction. Right? So everything's divided by 1. We just don't write that. It right? would be silly. When you have a negative exponent, you take the power with the negative exponent and you move it to the other side of the fraction. Okay, so if we took this power, 3 to the negative 3, and we put it on the bottom of the fraction, we would now have 3 to the power of positive 3 on the bottom. Because when we move it, we change it to become positive. And what's left on top would be nothing. If there's nothing on top, we represent nothing with a 1. So 1 to the, divided by 3 to the power of 3 would be your final answer. Negative exponents go to the bottom. They become positive exponents. Awesome. Let's look at C. There is only one power, right? 2 to the negative 5. It's unfortunately a negative exponent, though, so we need to change it to become positive. The way we change exponents, we take the negative power, this is my power, and we move it to the other side of the fraction. In this case, it goes from the bottom to the top. So this would become 2 to the power of 5, And what's left on the bottom would be nothing, or divided by 1. Right? But you don't need to write the divided by 1. So it just stays like that. 2 to the power of 1. All right, let's try D. We have 6 to the power of negative 7 divided by 6 to the power of negative 5. These are like bases, right? They're both sixes. When you're dividing, you subtract the exponent. To subtract the exponent in your calculator, you would go negative 7 minus negative 5. Okay, so the exponents are negative 7 minus negative 5. When you put that in your calculator, make sure you're using the negative buttons. Okay, the negative button is beside the decimal. So you want negative 7 and then subtract, which is by the plus sign, and then negative 5, which is again by the decimal. You should end up getting 6 to the power of negative 2. Right? Negative 7 minus negative 5 is negative 2. Awesome. We've simplified that. We've combined it. Now we have a negative exponent. Negative exponents can't happen, so we take the entire power, we move it to the bottom of the fraction, because this is technically on the top, and it becomes 1 divided by 6 squared. Like that. I didn't do a little arrow. I'll do a little arrow. Awesome. Last one. We have an exponent on an exponent. We call this power of a power law. Right? So we take the outside exponent and we multiply it into the other exponent. So that negative 1 needs to multiply into the 3. That will become 2 to the power of negative 3. Three times negative 1 is negative 3. Awesome. Technically, this is 2 to the negative 3 divided by 1. Right? It's a fraction. Everything's a fraction. We just don't usually write it. We have a negative power. We have 2 to the negative 3. We need to move it to the other side of the fraction. That leaves us with 1 divided by 2 to the positive. Not that bad, right? Things to be careful with. We only move negative exponents. Okay? 
You don't move negative spaces. Sometimes people mess those up. Right? So if I had negative 4 to the power of 2, that's okay. It's negative exponents that we can't have. And those things have to be. Be very careful about what your powers are. Remember, there's lots of tricks of like multiple letters and then multiple exponents. Only the powers with negative exponents need to be. We'll get to some questions where that actually happens. But those are probably the two biggest tricks that happen. Awesome. I want you guys to jump to this one. Um, try A on your own. And then we'll do a couple together. And then you can try a couple more on your own. Hey, but try A on your own first. Okay, we're going to look at A here. So, class example three, question A. We have a to the negative 4 and a to the negative 3. They're being multiplied. Same basis being multiplied means we add the exponents. So your first step, and if I was marking this on a written response question, I would want to see this first step where I add these exponents to become a to the negative 7. And negative 4 plus negative 3 is negative 7. Awesome. The second step, and the second thing I'd want to see, is that you recognize that that is a negative power. Negative powers need to be moved to create positive exponents. So this thing would move to the bottom of your fraction, becoming 1 divided by a to the 7 to the full number. Awesome. I find it easier if you combine first into a singular one and then move it. Okay, so the negative exponents is like the last thing we deal with. Awesome. Let's look at B. I'm going to rewrite B because I don't like division questions written like this. Instead, I like to write them as fractions. So I would rewrite this as 6x squared divided by 2x to the 7. Now, you don't need to write it like that. Yeah, I just find it easier to deal with in a fraction form. And yeah, that's why I do. Awesome. Looking at that, we need to combine that to become a singular thing. We did a thing where we said coefficients go with coefficients. That means 6 divided by 2. You could calculate that. 6 divided by 2 equals 3. The next thing we talked about was that Letters go with letters, that means x's go with x's. So we have x squared divided by x to the 7. We subtract the exponent. When we subtract 2 minus 7, we get x to the negative 5. Like that. Okay, that's the first step. That's combining everything into a singular expression. Now, we have to deal with the negative exponent, because we have x to the negative 5. Couple important things here. Remember, this is technically a fraction. We just don't write it as a fraction all the time, but it is an invisible fraction. Next thing that's important is what is the power that's negative here? So, for instance, looking at this, this is 3 times x to the negative 5. Only the x has a negative exponent. The 3 does not have a negative exponent. It's not a part of that power. So when you're moving things around, only the power with a negative exponent is going to go to the bottom. Everything else will stay where it is. So in this question, the 3 on top, it doesn't move. It stays on top. The x to the negative 5 it had a negative exponent, so it does move to the bottom. And it looks like that. 3 stayed on the top, x to the negative 5 moved to the bottom, and now it's positive. Form. All right, inevitably, people always ask me, what happened to the 1? Right? Like, we had a 1 there, now the 1's just vanished, and it's gone. The 1 is still technically there. 
you have 1 times x to the power of 5. We don't write that. Right? We don't normally write 1 times something. But technically, the 1 is still there. But again, mathematically, we don't need to write that there's 1x to the power of 5 there. We just put x to the power of 5. All right. Let's try C together. So if you look at C, it's another division question. Letters go with letters. Numbers go with numbers. In this case, the coefficient is uh, 1, divisible 1, divided by 2. Those can't go combined at all, so we still have a 2 on the bottom. You could technically write the 1 on top as well. I wouldn't, but you could. Our next rule was letters go with letters. y to the 6 divided by y to the negative 5. You subtract your exponents. I would use your calculator for that. 6 minus negative 5 equals y to the power of 11. That would be 11. When you use the subtraction rule, your exponent always goes to the top, okay? whether it's positive or negative. Using this subtraction rule always gives you the top. You have y to the power of 11 divided by 2. You don't need to do anything else to that question because you've created a singular thing, you've simplified it all the way, and you've got a positive exponent. So you're all done. Fantastic. All right, D. There's a couple ways that you can tackle D. Um, I would prefer to do it the way I'm going to do it. But there is other ways. So if you read about other ways, or you have a tutor or a friend that shows you a different way, hey, that, that works. Okay. Uh, but I'm always just going to kind of show you the way I think is most effective. If I was looking at that, I always say deal with the negative exponent last. So instead of dealing with this negative 3, I'm going to say I'm going to follow my power rule, which says that the negative 3 should go to everything. Okay. That means this changes to become negative 2 to the power of 3, sorry, negative 3, and x to the power of negative 3. And I distributed that exponent in. You'll also notice that I put the negative 2 in brackets because the negative is a part of the 2, and that makes a big difference in your calculator. Awesome. Now that I've got the exponent in the brackets, and I've simplified as far as I can, now I'm going to deal with all these negative exponents. And I have two of them in this case. Again, this is divided by 1, right? an invisible 1. Anything with a negative exponent, so this power needs to move to the bottom, and this power needs to move to the bottom. It ends up that everything needs to move to the bottom, but I like to look at them as two separate powers moving to the bottom. When I do that, I end up getting nothing on top, so I've got a 1. Okay, it's like a placeholder, so there's nothing left on the top. I have negative 2 to the power of 3, and I have x to the power of 3. Both became positive 3's because they moved, the power went to the bottom. That's really good. I would do one last thing to kind of finish it off. Uh, the negative 2 to the power of 3, this guy right here, it could be evaluated or calculated. Right? Like I would put that in my calculator to simplify it. So in my calculator, I go negative 2 to the power of 3. And this right here would change to become 1 divided by 8 and then x to the power of 2. So I would just simplify that kind of one step further. I would actually evaluate what 2 to the negative 3, or sorry, 2 to the power of 3. Sorry, if you put that in your calculator, you probably notice I messed up. It's negative 8. 
I missed that negative sign there. It's negative 8 x to the power 3. Awesome. I'm going to let you try E and F. Both are hard. Both are harder than anything we've done. So if you're stuck, hey, that's okay. But give it a shot and see if you can kind of work your way through it. 